Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 28th Blurs Virtual Seminar. Blurs Virtual Seminar is a platform that allows health professionals to discuss current management updates of different health-related topics for better patient care. And this platform is brought to you by Blue Health Utopia, a medical consultancy company founded by medical doctors and a computer engineer. And we aim to be an influential healthcare leader in creating a skilled community through easily accessible knowledge in preventive medicine. I'm your host, Adam Gitacho. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Blue Health Utopia. And it's a pleasure to have Dr. Wandu Balaina here with us to give us an update on the uh, updates of uh, national ANC guideline topic. Uh, Dr. Wandu Balaina, he's an assistant professor of obstetrics and gynecology uh, at Hawassa University Comprehensive Specialized Hospital. And it's a huge honor to have you here, doctor. Thank you, Adam, for your introduction. And uh, my colleagues, sorry for the delay to start the meeting. And uh, now we can start in the next slide. Hello, next slide. So our seminar has outlines and uh, why we need the outlines are why we need the new guidelines and uh, the introduction for or summary of the, the guidelines and the the primary clinical and the public health outcome interest of these guidelines and the key principle of antenatal care, principle of preconception, uh, preconception care. And after that, assessment of fetus and the mother during ANC follow-up. And the, during ANC follow-up also, we need, uh, we provide health promotion, disease prevention, treatment, uh, uh, disease during the pregnancy intervention for common uh, pregnancy related uh, conditions. The final uh, uh, outline is strengthening the health system for ANC. So the health system is strengthened for adequate uh, ANC provision. Next. So the objective of this uh, virtual seminar is to the audience, to enable the audience to reason out why the new guidelines are needed and to describe the primary clinical and public health outcome of this guideline, describing the key principle of ANC uh, care and uh, to do a comprehensive preconception care through risk assessment, prevention and treatment, and the provision of psychological support for our patients. And uh, the audience uh, are expected to be able to assess mother and the fetus uh, well being and uh, uh, any risks, and also health promotion through the counseling and the prevention and the treatment of maternal malnutrition during the pregnancy and the delivery of preventive ANC intervention for tetanus, anemia, RH, uh, uh, isoimmunizations. Uh, asymptomatic infection established and that providing treatment for established uh, disease and uh, list out how the way to improve the health facility for NSE service. These are uh, my objectives. So why we need guide, uh, the new guideline? The previous uh, focused NSE is uh, associated with uh, increased maternal mortality. And uh, in 2015, almost 300,000 uh, uh, maternal days during uh, uh, that years, and also 2.6 million perinatal uh, mortality due to stillbirths. 60% of them antipartal uh, happened during the antipartal period, mainly due to untreated infection, hypertension, and poor fetal growth. So the recent evidence suggests that uh, focused ANC model is associated with uh, perinatal days. And uh, so uh, it, it is better to adapt the <coughs> new ANC model because it, increase, it decreases the perinatal days and the maternal days significantly. The, the current uh, new guidelines says that the ANC visit is replaced with uh, the previous terms of uh, ANC contact. 
it shows the intensive natures of the implementations of this uh, CARES. Uh, so the current, current we say the ANC visits, it, it's not contact. So the guideline focused on core practice in ANC by assessment, prevention, and the treatment, and it's complemented by lifestyle modifications. So uh, with our introduction, I'll uh, tell the definition of NC according to WHO. NC is a continuum of reproductive uh, care provided by skilled healthcare professionals to the pregnant woman and the adolescent girls uh, in order to ensure the best conditions of both mother and the baby during the pregnancy by providing a platform for health promotion, uh, disease uh, screening, diagnosis, and uh, treatment, and uh, preventions. So the 2016 WHO new guidelines uh, says uh, with, it comes with a motto of pos positive pregnancy experience, and it includes 49 recommendations. And the 19th are recommended throughout all populations. And the 23 are context specific. And the seven of them is are <clears throat> non recommended or not recommended. When we say context specific, so different country has different problems. If it takes our setups, we have a significant number of uh, uh, significant prevalence of HIV and uh, intestinal parasitosis, uh, TBs and uh, malaria. So these are context, uh, contextually, it is a uh, best recommendation for our setup. So Ethiopia adapt, adapted this uh, context specific recommendation as per uh, country's perspectives. Ethiopia, eligible, Ethiopia is eligible for most of WHO recommendation in the context specific recommendations. So the recommendation will facilitate positive pregnancy experience by providing a quality, integrated, comprehensive, and a woman-centered care. So the new recommendation has several dual recommendation addressing preconception care, pregnant woman-centered care, maternal and fetal assessment, and the prevention and the therapeutic interventions counseling and the health promotion and also influencing the health system to strengthen the quality of energy. So we will see each is separately in details. So the primary clinical and the public health outcome interest of this guideline when we see so the first objective is maternal outcome. The second is the <coughs> neonatal and the fetal outcome and the other is uh, social economic and health system outcome. In case of the maternal outcome, we expect from this guideline to increase the satisfaction of the mother and the family from ANC provided and uh, we, uh, to provide uh, universal screening for anemia, uh, blood group and RH factor, hepatitis, syphilis and HIV. And the pregnancy related malnutrition are uh, treated or corrected. And the common pregnancy related conditions are prevented or early detected and uh, treated. So we, we expect prevention or if not possible, early detection in the treatment of the pregnancy related conditions. Pregnant women pregnant women are counseled to have safe and successful pregnancy outcome and uh, counseling on post uh, postpartum family planning. The next is the fatal and neonatal outcomes. So this is to prevent preventable early pregnancy loss and its complication, and uh, to prevent congenital anomaly. If congenital anomaly occur, to detect early and uh, to manage timely. And uh, during the follow-up and the evaluation to identify Geopardized fetus are timely detected and uh, delivered in setup where optimal neonatal care is available. 
The other objective uh, outcome expected is to reduce premature delivery. Uh, so by preventing uh, prema uh, premature delivery, because significant number of perinatal mortalities happen due to premature delivery, and the most of them happen due to preeclampsia. Therefore, preventing uh, preeclampsia and treating early may reduce this uh, perinatal mortality. The other is elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B during NC follow-up during delivery and the lactation period. The next uh, primary clinical and public health outcome is health system outcome. Health system is expected to improve. Improvement of the health system will improve the quality of NC. NC attendees are maintained through continuum of care and uh, to increase NC coverage, to increase skilled birth attendance and postpartum care, and to decrease the NC dropout. Uh, keep, what are the key principles of antenatal care? There are eight principles of antenatal care. These key principles are the first one is the one which included in the current uh, guidelines. It is implementation of eight plus NC visit schedule, eight plus. Women with low risk are expected to have eight visits during NC. NC should be woman centered. So the communication and the counseling should be accepted by the pregnant woman. Uh, that is, the, when you say the, uh, the NC is woman centered, the other is to demedicalize the NC. That means to minimize the sets of intervention, to avoid unnecessary and uh, costly investigation, to avoid. Uh, unnecessary intervention during the pregnancy. Therefore, the pregnancy requires minimal intervention, minimal investigation, and uh, this is when we say the demedicalize the NC. And uh, the providing action in the timely, timely care to all pregnant women. NC should be evidence-based and it is multidisciplinary. When you say multidisciplinary, the nurse, the general practitioner, midwife, ISO or the obstetricians can involve in the care of the woman during the pregnancy. If the woman has surgical conditions or medical conditions, it needs further specialist consultation in the management. So in this case, we say it is a multidisciplinary. NC should respect the privacy, dignity, and the confidentiality of the woman. NC provider should be motivated and competent and compassionate. Other is a woman with a special need uh, require additional care. When you say this, women with special needs are those with disability, adolescent survivor of the gender-based violence or women in humanitarian crisis. The next is <laughs> the principle of the preconception care as a base for NC. Preconception care will improve the pregnancy outcome if initiated prior to the pregnancy, but this is the most ignored uh, care. The reason may be due to the uh, way we without. So uh, we may consider preconception care luxurious, but it's not. It improves the pregnancy outcomes. So comprehensive. Uh, care and evaluation of preconception care include risk assessment, so history, physical examination, and investigation, and the prevention of disease that may develop during the pregnancy, treat pre pregnancy medical condition, and provide psychological support. Next slide. So the precon. Uh, Conception assessments are include the potential recurring condition or obstetric condition need to be assessed, like preterm labor, preeclampsia, eclampsia, GDM, congenital abnormality, or uh, purpural uh, psychosis. And uh, obstetrics and the gynecologic surgery may affect the route of delivery, 
timing of termination need to be assessed, like operative vaginal delivery, circulate lips, cone biopsy, myomectomy, or myoplasty. Immunologic disorder like SLE need to be evaluated, and uh, medical and uh, mental health disorder need to be assessed Diab for diabetic, thyroid, hypertension, anemia, epilepsy, all need to be addressed preconception and the infectious uh, conditions, malnutrition or obes obesity, substance use, radiation exposure or professional uh, or environmental exposure need to be addressed. And the physical disability and the developmental disorder. These are the how we assess our patients. So after assessment, so the interventions are preconception assessment we leave to the woman to have to conceive immediately so we allow them you we tell her to you can conceive or delay the pregnancy or uh, until the me underlying medical conditions are corrected or to for the pregnant woman to avoid pregnancy some contraindication for pregnancy are like severe cardiac disease, advanced malignancy, severe obstructive lung disease, and recurrence DVTs are contraindication for pregnancy. If you identify this during preconception care, we uh, tell the woman to not to have a conception. Counseling and providing contraceptive until the medical conditions are stabilized, and the other providing nutritional uh, support and the provision of folic acid if the risk of neural tube defect is high. Uh, micronutrient supplementation and the promotion of fortified and the biofortified food utilizations also another intervention. Weight gain, monitor, weight gain monitoring and adjustment of overweight or underweight is one of the intervention we do during the preconception care. The other interventions are provision of the vaccine. So uh, the tetanus vaccine can be initiated prior to the pregnancy and uh, continue according to the schedules. Lifestyle modification is another intervention to avoid substance or illicit drug use in the environmental hazard exposure. Medical adjustment for teratogenic drug need to be change it with an anteratogenic drug and a less uh, or less teratogenic drug or if non-teratogenic drugs are not available. And the counseling that the increased uh, risks of the chromosomal abnormality in the woman with advanced maternal age. The other intervention is socioeconomic status assessment and uh, uh, assessment of domestic violence social discrimination and the stigmata and the ensure uh, the linkage to the locally available service. The next is assessment of uh, uh, mother, mother and the fetus during NC follow-up. So during the follow-up, we assess the woman during NC, during the first visit through the next eight or nine or more uh, visits based on the patient's there are current recommendation is to have eight plus visits. So we have one visit in the first trimester before 12 weeks. And uh, so during the second trimester, we have two uh, visits at 20 and the 26 weeks. And uh, during the third trimester, we have five visits at 30, 34, 36, 38, and the 40. If the woman still is not, the fetus is not delivered, so the woman is appointed during at 41 weeks and we do membrane striping. So maternal assessment and the fetal assessment during the first visit. So uh, a woman is assessed through the, like preconception care, we assess through the history and the physical examination. So to have adequate and reliable history, you need to create a rapport between the pregnant woman and uh, yourself. And the other identification of the woman, the age and the distance from the hospital is important. Manustral histories are important to 
confirms that the day is really available. And the present pregnancy history and the past obstetric history, medical uh, histories and the uh, current medications are important. Gynecologic and nutritional histories and uh, social and the personal histories are important. So during the assessment, we will assess this, we will address this. <coughs> During the physical examination, we assess for anemia, so conjunctiva, oral mucosa, nail beds, and we assess for respiratory distress. Vital, uh, vital signs are important, and uh, <coughs> BMI is the pre pregnancy weight is known, and the MUAC is used for assessment of malnutrition during the pregnancy. If the woman has the MUAC measurement less than 23, it indicates that. She has acute malnutrition, auscultation of the chest and the breathing, uh, the chest for breathing and the heart sound is also part of evaluation. Obstetrics evaluation to measure symphysis to fundal height, auscultation of fetal heart beat, and uh, palpation of the abdomen for enemas or organomegaly, and uh, <coughs> examination for uh, female genital mutilations, a scar, and uh, if uh, there is an indication for de-infibulations. Examination of musculoskeletal for growth deformities also important. Uh, there are a few uh, uh, indications for external genital examination. Some of, uh, for example, most common indications are symptomatic STIs and the history of female genital cutting a screening for precancerous lesion, any amount of vaginal bleeding, a speculum after 28 weeks, and uh, if any leakage of amniotic fluid, we also do speculum examination. And uh, if bleeding occur after 28 weeks, and uh, we need to rule out uh, placenta previa before we insert uh, a speculum. And uh, <coughs> suspected spontaneous abortion, ectopic pregnancy in the preterm labor are another indication for uh, genital vaginal examinations. Uh, eva uh, genital vaginal examination for evaluation of pelvic abdicacy is not recommended. Current uh, way to access to assess the pelvic abdicacy is allowing or trial of flavor. The other is investigation we do during the uh, follow-up. So universal screening can be done, uh, need to be done for hemoglobin, RH status, and the urine analysis, HIV, hepatitis B, and the syphilis. This is a routine investigation. So we need to do for every woman, including urine analysis. Urine analysis need to be done at least every trimester. Ultrasound, the current, uh, the guideline recommend to have at least one ultrasound prior to 24 weeks. This are low as to have a gestation knowledge to detect fetal anomaly and the number of pregnancy and the placentation. The other selective or uh, case-specific screenings are done for GDM, TB, group B streptococcus, and uh, for mental uh, illness. So the basic, uh, no, the selective uh, or case-specific investigation for GDM are indication are previous personal or family history of uh, DM, previous uh, uh, maternal macrosomia, having uh, macrosomic fetus in the previous stillbirth, obesity, large for date uterus, and uh, uh, glucosuria. So the recommendation is to do with fasting blood sugar. Is a fasting blood sugar is greater than 95, it indicates GDM during the pregnancy or uh, using fasting plus 72 hours, one hour and a two hour oral glucose uh, tolerance test. And the other TV is based on symptoms. So we need to, if the woman has symptoms, we need to assess the woman for TV as for the sputum examination or chest X-ray and the GBS if the woman has previous uh, perinatal infection with GBS. So in this case, we do vaginal swab culture. Next. So risk assessment so during the 
uh, first NSE visit, we do the risk assessment. So high risk outside, outside of the index pregnancy and the high risk during the index pregnancy. There are two uh, categories. So outside of the index pregnancies are like maternal age, advanced maternal age, or young, uh, elder, premigravida, short satyr, obesity, underweight, or uh, physical disability, previous year of multiple pregnancy, recurrent abortion, greater than or equal to three, and the greater than or equal to one stillbirth, previous uh, underweight, greater less than 250 gram, and the greater than 1,000 gram, previous manual removal of placenta, malpresentation, malposition, post-term preeclampsia, eclampsia, and operative vaginal delivery, a rich isomunization, and the medical conditions, unwanted pregnancies, makes the pregnancy high-risk pregnancy. Next. Risk during the index pregnancy or during the current pregnancies are like if the woman has uh, threatened abortion, teratogenic exposure, pregnancy of sexual assault, multiple pregnancy, FH, and uh, pregnancy in induced hypertension, oligo, hydramnus, and polyhydramnus, and uh, confirmed or suspected IUGR, large for data trust, pregnancy associated pathology, newly sensitized, RH sensitized mother, and uh, a newly developed systemic infection, acute pile nephritis, recurrent UTI, bacterial vaginus, GDM, preterm. There are a lot of so, POM, core amnitis, and short cervix are the risk. So, if the woman has one of these risks, so the woman is considered as high risk and that she needs more number of ANC visits. During subsequent visits, so we assess the change of previous status and uh, we look for uh, new development. And uh, our assessment needs to be gestational age-based assessment in subsequent uh, pregnant uh, pre visits. And uh, instru we instruct the woman how to detect her and the baby's health. During the second visit at 20 weeks, so we review the chart of previous uh, visit and ask the woman for fetal movements and uh, require about the new development and uh, keep check for danger signs and determine gestational age and uh, look for general appearance, anemia and the weight, weight measurement, blood pressure measurement, MOAC measurement and fundalite measurement listening, uh, listening for fetal heartbeats and uh, doing ultrasound scanning, the one who said just uh, one ultrasound before 24 weeks and uh, provide deworming, iron folic uh, supplementation and the uh, calcium provision in the counseling on adherence of the drug, assessing and counseling on adherence of the drug and assess uh, feeding practice and the optimal maternal nutrition are at risk during the second visit. During the third visit at 26 weeks, so you conduct the same activity that we have done at 20 weeks, except ultrasound and uh, conduct urine uh, analysis for protein and the uh, gram stain to detect asymptomatic bacteria and the test for just uh, test for gestational diabetic woman, the diabetes, gestational diabetes if the woman is high risk. And uh, during the third, we repeat the syphilis and HIV if the woman is previously negative and uh, we test for hemoglobin. And uh, if perform fetal well-being if there is a discrepancy of fundalite in the gestational age and uh, if the woman uh, complains uh, decreased fetal movement. What is uh, initiated at 30 weeks or in the fourth weeks is counseling the woman on birth preparedness and the complication readiness. So this is started uh, starting from the fourth visit at 30 weeks. The other is counseling optima, uh, optimal breastfeeding practice. During the fifth visit, so we do what we have done at 30 weeks and the determine fatal presentation and the uh, urine proteins 
and the testing for syphilis if not done at 30 weeks and the counseling on breastfeeding and the immunization of the newborn and the immunization of her also and the counseling on the stimulation of early childhood development so at 30 weeks or 34 weeks or at five weeks with the, what we need to start is a stimulation of early childhood uh, brain development while we counsel this patient as a patient the pregnant woman we counsel her the father or the husband to approach uh, the pregnant pregnancy or the maternal abdomen and to speak or to sing to the fetus so this will allow the a fetus to identify the sound of her, uh, his uh, father. So at delivery, this may help to the neonate to identify his father. So this means that it helps the neurologic development. At six week, uh, six visit, uh, what we do is we conduct all what we have done at 34 weeks and uh, we assess uh, mental health. At 30 weeks, there is preparedness and the complication readiness. At 34 weeks, uh, a stimulation of early childhood development. And at 36 weeks, we assess for mental health of the woman. There is uh, a different uh, fear, might worry about the labor and the labor pain in the delivery. So we need to counsel the woman and uh, we need to ask her what is her status and uh, repeating hemoglobin. Uh, during these times also important. The other is at uh, 38 weeks or at seven contacts, orient the woman how to assess the fetal kick. And uh, during the 40 weeks, we review the fetal kick counts and uh, repeat what we done at 38 weeks and ultrasound scanning for fetal well-being is important. If at 41 weeks, if not delivered at for, uh, till 41 weeks, so we make uh, mem membrane striping and uh, we do ultrasound scanning for fetal welding. Okay. Next. The next is health promotion, uh, disease prevention and the treatment during the pregnancy. So counseling a woman during NSC is a two-way communication and a two-way con con confidential communication. So the woman, need, we need to uh, uh, provide and we need to establish rapport between us and the client. The focus of counseling is to discuss on major problem identified within the woman and her partner and her fetus and uh, to generate a workable solution and uh, to make a decision and uh, to plan a future regular and uh, emergency reporting and the management. The three major areas of counseling and health promotions are uh, lifestyle modifications, starting during preconception and uh, continue throughout the pregnancy and the postpartum, and uh, counseling on danger sign and the symptoms during the pregnancy and the birth, pre birth preparedness and the complication readiness. And the counseling on other issues like family planning, breastfeeding and immunization and the screening for cervical uh, cancer, also another health promotion uh, service. So the counseling on lifestyle modification. So we have uh, said previously also during the preconception care, uh, avoiding uh, substance use and uh, avoiding illicit drug and uh, avoiding the over-the-counter uh, drugs and avoiding also excess caffeine intake, getting regular exercise and the sexual activity and adequate sleep, reducing the stress, maintaining hygiene and the healthy diets are among the lifestyle modification adequate and the safe nutrition, rich and the dense uh, feedings are important. One additional meal during the pregnancy and the two additional meal during reactations are recommended. Normal weight gain are recommended. Ex weight, excess weight gains are not healthy because once a woman gets the weight, it's difficult to lose during the postpartum period. So it results in weight retention. So the recommendation on counseling and health promotion uh, this is the recommendation that comes from the uh, 
guidelines. So counseling the pregnant woman to avoid substance use and uh, recreational drugs and uh, during the preconception, during the pregnancy and the counseling the pregnant woman to avoid eating raw meat, <coughs> raw meat unpastural, unpastoralized and or raw uh, uh, milks and unwashed vegetables and the junk food and to avoid excess caffeine intakes and the regular exercise non strenuous physical exercise are recommended. Mm -hmm. Counseling the pregnant woman to maintain regular personal hygiene and uh, to have optimized nutritional during the pregnancy. Next. The other is recommendation. Uh, the other recommendations are uh, counseling on danger sign and the symptoms during the pregnancy. So the checklist of danger sign and symptoms starting from the first visits or first NC visits. And uh, so we counsel the woman uh, to notice vaginal bleeding, any amount and sudden leak of uh, fluid or offensive vaginal discharge, sustain, sustain nausea, vomiting, chills, rigors, and a cough, which is maybe dry or uh, productive, severe headache, blurring of vision, a swelling of the hand and the face and a convulsion or lose of consciousness and the decrease or lose of fetal movement, premature onset of contraction and the severe unusual abdominal pain in flank, epigastric or right upper quadrant pains and the skin rash, all this as a danger sign. So and the woman is uh, told to come early if she noticed any of the above uh, complaints. The other is birth uh, preparedness and the complication readiness, counseling all pregnant women on birth uh, preparedness and the complication readiness starting from 13 weeks to ensure that the partner and the families involving uh, are uh, prepared themselves for action. The component of this uh, counseling are awareness of danger sign and uh, Delivery with skilled birth, uh, birth attendants, arrange the means of transport, saving money for emergency and the preparing uh, support during and after uh, the birth. So the family, the friend may involve in these activities. Preparing essential items for childbirth and arranging the way to communicate in emergency situation. Designing a decision makers uh, in the behalf of the patients when the patient is possibly become unconscious, including giving consent. These are the birth preparedness and the complication readiness. So other counseling are, so uh, counseling important on family planning. So to have at least two to three years of pregnancy intervals and the counseling uh, on breastfeeding and the counseling on child immunization and the screening for cervical cancer. Okay, next. So the nutritional assessment, the, the next uh, presentation is nutritional intervention. So nutritional assessment, assessing the woman for uh, malnutrition, so dietary history, clinical uh, anthropometric measurement or weight measurement during each follow-up and anthropometric measurement. These are help to assess the woman the status of nutrition. So we need to uh, make uh, nutritional assessment during every visit for ANC. And the counseling on consumption of quality, safe, nutrition, dense, diversified food, and the micronutrient supplementation to improve maternal and fetal nutritional outcome and the health outcome is important. Counseling the mother on consumption of at least one additional meal and uh, two additional uh, during the pregnancy and two additional meal during the lactation and the provision of the adequate iodine salt intake. Counseling on health eating during the pregnancy. To, uh, so excessive weight gains are not recommended as we previously said. Next. So nutritional uh, treatment for if the woman is malnutrition, so if the MOAC is less than 23, they need to be provided with uh, ready-to-use foods like plant peanut or soya bean. 
and a daily iron intake, 60 milligram of elemental iron in the 0 0.4 uh, milligram of folic acid supplementation is recommended and uh, during each follow-up. So this will decrease the maternal anemia, proprioceptis and the low birth weight and the preterm uh, birth. So the, and the amount of tablets that the woman take, should take during the pregnancy is the least is 90 and the maximum is 180. And as during the follow-up, we need to assess the uh, adherence and uh, we need to counsel on adherence. Investigate all pregnant women for anemia, assessing compliance in the adherence of iron. So undernutrition and the micronutrient deficiency are the risk for fetal IUGR and the low birth weight. These are the table. This table shows the expected weight gain during the pregnancy. Underweight, a woman with BMI less than 18.5 are expected to gain 12 to 18 kilo, and uh, normal uh, BMI expected to gain 11 to 16 uh, kgs. And if the woman is overweight, she is expected to have less weight gain, 7 to 11.5 kilos. If the woman is obese or the BMI is greater than 30, so the woman is expected to get less weight and uh, the weight expected weight gain is five to nine kilos. And uh, these women are counseled on less carbohydrate diet, less protein diet, and uh, less fat food or to avoid fat food and uh, to take more vegetables and the fruits. During the pregnancy, if the woman has anemia, so we need to treat usually. Uh, so routinely we provide the iron folate prophylaxis if the woman has normal hemoglobin levels. If she has mild anemia, therapeutic iron dose is given and uh, peripheral morphologies and RBCs indices are uh, need to be done to identify the cause of anemia and the type of anemia. If the woman has moderate anemia also, the same thing is done and uh, uh, provide close follow-up and for improvement. If the woman has severe anemia, she needs uh, referral to the hospital for complete investigation for blood transfusion and con to continue iron therapy. The other uh, preventive antipartal interventions are provision of vaccine, RH discrepancy treatment, uh, prophylaxis provision as asymptomatic bacteria, in bacterial infection of urine uh, and the provision of treatment and established infection and other disorder treatment and the common uh, pregnancy related condition treatment. The details are provided uh, next. So vaccination, so uh, previously, uh, the vaccine uh, to for tetanus is TT vaccine. Current is TD tetanus and uh, diphtheria. Uh, so at least two dose of the TD vaccine is recommended to prevent uh, neonatal and the maternal tetanus during the pregnancy. More vaccine can be administered during the pregnancy. Those who are uh, acellular, like uh, acellular vaccine pertussis, hepatitis A and B, pneumococcal and meningococcal, polysaccharide can be provided during the pregnancy. Vac vaccines that are contraindicated during pregnancies are like measles, mantis, and rubella. So the schedules of the TD vaccine is the first is during the first NC contact and the, the second is after four weeks and the third is after six months, the fourth after one year and the fifth is after one year's interval. So to be protective, the woman should need to take at least two doses. Two doses are protective 80% of the tetanus for one to three years and the three doses up to 95% for five years and the four doses 99% for 10 years and 99% the five doses prevent 99% during all childbearing years. So the, we said that it, it needs uh, two doses to be protective and uh, 
the last dose, if the woman initiates antenatal care late, and the last dose needs to be taken at least two weeks prior to the uh, delivery to be effective. The other is RH isomerization. The recommendation is to screen the mother, the father, and the baby for RH antigen and to provide anti-D for RH negative, combustase negative mother at 28 weeks. And uh, if, the woman, uh, if the woman delivered RH positive baby to provide the second dose during delivery within 72 hours, uh, to prevent the RH sensitization. And uh, the recommendation is uh, if the woman is RH negative and the Kumbis test positive, that means the woman is sensitized or RH isoimmunized. And that, so this woman needs to be referred to the center where fetal maternal specialists are available even prior to the pregnancy. The other is deworming. So deworming is one of the context-specific WHO recommendations. So the prevalence of the uh, intestinal parasitosis in Ethiopia is between 32 to 70 percent of the population has intestinal parasitosis, and the WHO recommend universal deworming if the woman, if the population's prevalence of intestinal parasitosis is greater than 20 percent. So Ethiopia is eligible. In this case, so the recommendation is to deworm all pregnant tumor with single dose of albendazole 400 microgram or maybe endazole 500 after the first pregnancy. If there is a massive intestinal parasitosis, symptomatic, so if we are forced to uh, deworm in the first trimester, the preferable de drug is to use maybe endazole. Albendazole is contraindicated. The other new recommendation is this, uh, so pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV prevention. If the, if the pregnant woman is HIV positive, you no, know, HIV negative, and her partner is HIV positive, and uh, if the woman has uh, have multiple sexual partner without condom, and if she doesn't you know the sero status of the woman she has sex with, so the recommendation is to use the prophylaxis uh, counseling and the provision of TDF and the 3TC for as a pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV prevention. So the, the woman is provided with TDF and the 3TC. In this case, it is uh, preventive. The effectiveness is around 99%. If the, if, the, if the woman is positive and the husband is negative, still these recommendations is to provide the husband with this prophylaxis. <laughs> the other is prevention of uh, preeclampsia. Ethiopia, the Ethiopian dietary calcium intake is 60 to 70 percent less than that of the recommended uh, dietary recommendation. So WHO recommend in, this, in such population to provide a daily uh, calcium 1.5 to 2 gram uh, per day, uh, starting from the second trimester after 14 weeks. So uh, the, our guideline also adopted it and uh, to provide all pregnant women with calcium daily. So if the woman is at high risk for, to have uh, preeclampsia, uh, this uh, woman is need to be referred to the hospital for further management. The calcium and the irons are affecting absorption of each other. So it needs to be taken three hours apart. The other is prevention of malaria. According to WHO, Ethiopia is low to moderate malaria transmission intensive country. So the package of malaria prevention during the pregnancies are promotion in the use of insecticide treated bed nets and appropriate a diagnosis, case diagnosis with prompt and effective treatment. The other is provision of sulfadoxine pyrimetamine during the pregnancy, starting from the second uh, trimester, uh, every one month until delivery. This is, uh, so among these 
preventive intervention. So Ethiopia adopted uh, and I put the recommendation below to use insecticide uh, treated bed net to all pregnant women and a prompt diagnosis and the treatment of malaria infection. So the experts that developed these guidelines also said that there is high prevalence of positivity of asymptomatic malaria in, in the woman who living in the malaria endemic area like Benisha, Gumu, Somali, Afar, Gambilla, so and the other selected area of the country like Arbamid. So the recommendation is to treat every pregnant woman in the high risk area uh, to test for malaria every at every visit to detect asymptomatic malaria. The other is the treatments of the asymptomatic bacteria. The prevalence is around five to 20%. And uh, this is a risk for cystitis, acute pyelonephritis, preterm birth, prom, and the coronitis. So how do they, how we diagnose bacteria? It can be diagnosed with midstream urine culture, midstream urine gram stain, or deep stick. The most sensitive one, midstream, the most sensitive one is midstream urine culture when it shows the load of single bacteria is greater than uh, making greater than 100,000 colony forming unit per ml. So if this is, uh, this is the most sensitive, if it's positive, we treat. And the other, so our setup, the recommendation is to do gram stain from the midstream urine. Deep stick is less sensitive. We diagnose the uh, asymptomatic bacteria when we detect the nitrate or leukocyte stress positive. So the, our guideline recommend gram stain of the mid urine stream and uh, using to detect the asymptomatic bacteria and uh, to treat the this uh, infection with amoxicillin or cephalexin to reduce the risk of associated obstetric complications I've said previously. A woman with a diabetic mellitus. So one of the reason to include the preconception care in this guideline is to optimize the uh, NST care. So one of the advantage of including like addressing the issue of uh, diabetics and other medical condition. So uh, the recommendation is diabetic mellitus uh, during the pregnancy need a specialized care. So like a consultation with the medical uh, uh, people to achieve a good glycemic control and to improve mat maternal and fetal outcome. Management uh, principle is early diagnosis and appropriate treatment. So the good glycemic uh, control achieved uh, through lifestyle modification by avoiding hyperglycemic diets, carrying out with moderate intensive regular exercise and avoid chronic stress and uh, use uh, using or administering drug like oral hypoglycemic agent or insulin. So this need a specialized uh, care. Hypertensive uh, disorder of the pregnancy. Uh, this uh, is the second most common cause of maternal death. And uh, hypertensive pregnancy disorders are one of the commonest cause of prenatal uh, premature delivery and uh, increased perinatal uh, mortality. The recommendation is to provide a potential antihypertensive and anticonvulsant drug to all pregnant women with severe hypertensive disorder of pregnancy at all health facility. All health facility are expected to provide the potent antihypertensive and anticonvulsant drugs. If the woman is convulsing while in the health center or somewhere, so before referring, we need to provide anticonvulsant. The other uh, recommendation is treatment uh, of the syphilis, HIV, hepatitis B infection during the pregnancy. Recommendation one is the screening for, for this disease as important. If the woman is positive for any one of these HIV, syphilis, or hepatitis B, it needs to test for the partner and the, for the children and the treat them accordingly. So the recommendation, uh, 
the spark. Okay. Applying all necessary precautions during the ANC to reduce a vertical transmission of this uh, illness and uh, to treat, uh, to test for HIV every three months and for syphilis every six months during the pregnancy. If the previous uh, test is negative and if the woman is at high risk for acquiring this infection. If HIV, if the woman is HIV positive, the recommendation is to start TDF3TC and deltogravil, or if not available, we can use TDF3TC if available. If the woman is positive for benza, uh, positive for syphilis, so providing benzantine penicillin, 2.4 million units, half on each buttock weekly for three consecutive weeks is recommended. So if the woman is positive for syphilis and uh, if she's not asymptomatic and no symptom on her body, so it's considered as late, late syphilis. So it needs three weeks uh, treatment with uh, penicillin, benzantyl penicillin. Other option is to use cocaine penicillin 1.5 milligram IM daily for 10 days. And if the woman is penicillin allergy, to use erythrocyte, erythromycin, uh, 500 milligram TID for seven days. The other recommendation included in this guideline is, so if the woman is positive for hepatitis B surface antigen, it is important to determine the viral le uh, DNA levels. So if the viral DNA of hepatitis B is greater than 20,000, the woman is, uh, uh, has an indication to start Tinophobias at 28 weeks of gestation until the delivery, and uh, she needs consultation to uh, continue uh, the, this medication for lifetimes also. So medical people need to be consulted in this case after delivery. Uh, so sometimes, so this uh, viral load uh, can't uh, be uh, services cannot be available. So detection of hepatitis B E antigen is another option. If it is positive, it indicates active viral replication. So it's the recommendation to start tenofovirs at 28 weeks. And uh, after delivery, linkage is important to medical people to, because this need a special care. The other we say is a previously specific uh, investigation or evaluation is for one of them is TB. So TB prevalence, active TB prevalence in Ethiopia is uh, 370 among 100,000 uh, pregnant women. So screening is recommended when it is greater than 100, 100,000 uh, pregnant women. So we need to assess the woman by symptoms and the signs and also with uh, sputum in the Test X ray during the pregnancy. Providing routine screening and confirming uh, confirmatory TB diagnosis tests or referring to the hospital and initiate anti TB at any gestation is recommended when the active TB is detected. Safe drugs are like INH, Rifampin, and uh, Etampoton. Other recommendation is if the woman is positive for TB, so family need to be screened. Next. The next is intervention for common pregnancy condition. Many of the minor pregnancy related disorder are medically treatable or simply psychological support or reassurance are sufficient when there is interactable pain, exaggerated, uh, pregnancy symptoms like persistent vomiting, constipation, uh, and the constitutional uh, sim symptoms of infection are there. So we, we need, it needs uh, thorough evaluation because minor pregnancy symptoms or disorder are a diagnosis of exclusion. So commonly we encounter the nausea and the vomiting is around 70% of the women experience this, this pregnancy related uh, condition like nausea and the vomiting 
and 20% of them has nausea and vomiting after 20 weeks of gestation. The other is this nausea vomiting, also called morning sickness, but this is a misnomer. So because the woman will experience the symptoms throughout the day, and uh, it doesn't uh, relate it to the morning event only. So what we do is reassure the woman that the symptoms of nausea vomiting will resolve by itself after the half of the pregnancy gestation time. And uh, to use ginger, chamomile, vitamin B6 are recommended for relieving the mild degree of nausea and vomiting. So the woman with uh, nausea and vomiting out of uh, them, one out of two percent will develop hypermis gravidarum, and uh, they will have hypotension, electrolyte imbalance, and uh, marked weight loss. And uh, so, this woman need uh, specialized medical care. They need to be admitted and treated accordingly. The other will reassure. Heartburn is also common. The effect around 30 to 50 percent during the pregnancy. So the cause may be a sneaker relaxation due to estrogen and progesterone and a gastric empty delaying and a compression of the stomach by enlarged gravid uterus and worsened by heavy meals, coffee and fatty food and some drugs. So the recommendation is lifestyle modification, modifying sleeping position preferable to sleep on the right side to facilitate the gastric impeding and uh, counseling on diet content and uh, meal times. So diet content, a small uh, frequent feeding and uh, avoid fatty and uh, spicy foods. And the meal time, usually uh, take the meal at least hour or two hours prior to sleeping. If the, this woman, uh, if these uh, symptoms of the heart burn persist, so antiacids are recommended. You can use magnesium or calcium containing antiacid. They are safe and effective. If uh, and to avoid aluminum uh, containing uh, antiacid because the gravid constipation and the concern for fetal neurotoxicity and the developmental delay. So if the heartburn persists and uh, uh, not improved with antiacid, it needs uh, further evaluation. Constipation also common, and uh, we need to rule out the mechanical cause and the medical cause of the constipation. Once we rule out, so the constipation can be prevented by increasing the fiber, high fiber diets and the frequent water intakes. Laxatives are preserved for uh, refractory cases. And uh, we need to avoid laxatives like pisacodyl, uh, mineral, and or castor oils. Hemorrhoids are other, uh, hemorrhoid and uh, varicose veins are other uh, common uh, conditions during the pregnancy. So the recommend <coughs> back. Okay. The recommendation is to encourage the pregnant woman to, to make a dietary and lifestyle modification to prevent the occurrence of hemorrhoid and the varicose vein. So prevention of const uh, constipation, uh, prevention of uh, the avoiding prolonged sitting and the vigorous training uh, are uh, recommended. And the other recommendation is uh, to apply anti-hemorrhoidal agents that are commonly used may relieve uh, these symptoms. Uh, in relation to the varicose vein, simple and the locally available methods like mechanical compression and uh, uh, leg elevation, not standing for long hours, water immersion can be applied and uh, can ease this uh, varicose vein and the leg uh, cramps. If the above treatments are uh, not improving the patient condition, uh, further evaluation is required. During the pregnancy, uh, the other is uh, vaginal uh, discharge. Vaginal discharge is common during the pregnancy and uh, there is an increased level of vaginal secretion due to the hormonal effect, mainly due to estrogen and uh, so we need to, when the patient come with this uh, complaint, we need to assess uh, the 
whether the discharge is abnormal or normal. Thorough assessment and investigation treatment of the woman with abnormal vaginal discharge to alleviate disturbing symptoms and the preventing obstetrics and the perinatal complication is recommended. Abnormal vaginal discharge can be characterized by the color yellow, green, and the gray, and the odor change, strong, foul smell odor, redness, inflammatory symptom like redness, itching, vulvar swelling, or ulcerations may indicate the vaginal discharge is abnormal. If possible, because this is a period of pregnancy, etiologic diagnosis and the treatment is uh, preferable. So when we confirm or suspect gonococcal infection, ceftriaxone is a preferred treatment. And uh, cl for chlamydia, azithromycin or erythromycin, for trichomonas in the bacterial vaginosis, metronidazole in the second and third trimester, and the vulvovaginal candidiasis can be treated with clotrimazole. These are safe during the pregnancy. Counseling pregnancy women, so to decrease this discharge or abnormal discharge development. So the woman is counseled to wear loose, loose cotton underwear or and loose fitting clothes to reduce vulvovaginal candidiasis. If we suspect the SETI, uh, so partner treatment is recommended. Headache is also another common. It has multiple etiology. So uh, sleep disturbance, lack of sleep, stress can be a possible cause. So uh, more than the pain, what uh, need to worry you is that the uh, use of over-the-counter drug. So the recommendation is if the woman has a severe headache, new onset headache, not responding for simple analgesia and uh, progressing, uh, headache may be a symptom that the underlying serious disorder, so it deserves uh, thorough evaluations. If the other, if the stress headache or something simple, if you perceive like that, we need to try, you can try with parastamol. Parastamol is a drug, a drug of choice to treat the headache during the pregnancy. So we need, you are not expected to avoid the treatment because untreated headache can be, uh, can cause uh, hypertension. So we need to treat the headache and we need to avoid like drug non steroidal anti inflammatory drug during the first and the third trimester. Back pain and the pelvic pain are common and are more common uh, with previous history of lower back pain. Cause uh, can be uh, lumbar lordosis, the increasing in weight during the pregnancy, ligament laxity due, due to the hormonal effect or impact of the gravitation in the mechanical uh, load on the lumbosacral is the, the cause of the headache, uh, the, the back pain, sorry. So management of uh, lower back pain, so uh, physiotherapy and the supportive uh, bills are recommended prevention uh, through ergonomic uh, exercise or ergonomic, uh, that means how to stand, how to bend over the, uh, her extreme, uh, her hip is important. So teaching the correct posture on standing, walking, bending will help the woman to relieve the symptoms. Exercise will improve the back pain. So the recommendation is to reassure the woman that this pain will go after the pregnancy and a simple analgesia or psychological support may be sufficient. Creating awareness of over-the-counter uh, drug is uh, important to avoid excess and recommended over-the-counter unvalidated um, valid, uh, uh, over-the-counter drug use are not recommended. So leg uh, cramp uh, mainly uh, uh, seen during the night times and it's painful. It can affect the sleep. So when the sleep affects, also affects the daily activity. Potent etiologies are nutritional deficiency. So magnesium supplementation, calcium supplementation, non-pharmacologic action will 
help the toilet with these problems. Wearing low heel shoes, sitting with flexed knee and a straight back support, avoiding weight bearing exercise, avoiding climbing stairs, and applying heat or massage in the area of the pain will uh, relieve these symptoms. So the recommendation is that to evaluate the uh, serious uh, condition because it is a diagnosis of exclusion. So the next is health, uh, strengthening the healthcare system for NC. So how we can strengthen the healthcare system. One is creating easy access, as, uh, easy access for guideline in terms of hard copy or electronics in soft copy. And incorporating this guideline in the curriculums, in lectures, seminars, and the tutorial, and uh, enhancing the ANC care provider by incorporating ANC into CMOC and uh, BMOC training and the string, uh, training training on job training and creating the woman friendly environment. And the other is introducing woman centered uh, care and uh, introducing woman health case notes. This WHO recommend to give the whole chart to the woman to carry and to come with her chart during the next visit. But our, our guideline says this is not feasible for our setups. So the healthcare provider will give the summary of each NC contact finding and intervention done during the NC. So one of the strengthening system for NC uh, care is uh, giving the woman health case notes, which is a summary of the intervention we did. We did. Uh, the digitalizing the health system and the integrating uh, other reproductive health with an ANC package and uh, continuing engagement to increase the uh, ANC coverage and the uh, continuous quality improvement and uh, monitoring and evaluations are the recommended uh, way to improve the health system for ANC purpose. These are the indication, uh, the indicators that we use for monitoring and evaluations. So for how many women have one visit, how many women two visit and the four visit, how many women have get uh, the four uh, ANC contacts or two ANC contacts, how many women get scanned before 24 weeks, screened for anemia, and how many women are screened for hepatitis B, C, and uh, syphilis and HIV, and how many of them treated? These are uh, the indicators. They are a lot, of, a lot. So it related to the supervisors. So next. Okay, these are my presentations, and thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor, for the elaborated. Uh, presentation. I know we have taken uh, much time for the presentation because uh, because of connection issues, we started a, a bit late. So I think uh, if you can see the question and answer uh, on your device, uh, doctor, you can answer a few, two or three questions because we don't have much time. Um, and uh, let's uh, conclude the session. Okay, the first question is how to proceed after initial management of syphilis in pregnant mother. So the, uh, that we screen the woman and we identify she is positive for VDRL or RPR. So we treat as late, late syphilis and we provide three dose weekly, three dose benzantine penicillin and uh, that is enough. If we detect, if we do the VDRL, it still can be positive because it takes time to eliminate uh, this uh, disease. So it is treatment. How can we get certificates? This is already answered. Okay. Okay. It says the next question is why at 34 or 36 weeks, a visit uh, is only two weeks. So most of the WHO finding also, the perinatal mortality, that say 60% of them are prevented 
sixty-some uh, percent of them are occurring antepartum. These are due to untreated infection, hypertension, and the medical conditions. So most of the days happen uh, neonatal days, or uh, sorry, uh, stillbirths happen during between thirty-four and thirty-six. So starting from thirty-six, our interval of care or NC visit is more frequent. We increased it. So the, this is after 34 weeks, most of the perinatal mortality happened. So we need to intensify our NC care to decrease perinatal mortality. That's why the interval is short. How to assess for uh, female genital uh, mutilation? And uh, so I think uh, this, we do physical examination. The main purpose is uh, whether the, need, the woman need deinfibulation. So if there is a, a fusion of the labia, we need to release this. And this is how to assess there is, if there is a fusion of the labia. Sorry, doctor, uh, I think we're running low on time. If you, uh, if you want to take one more question, uh, you can, but uh, if you are so then, enough, yeah. So the indication for calcium for is a guide I recommend for everyone. And uh, human oral candidiasis. So the, we, we don't recommend oral candidiasis uh, treatment for pregnant women. So it is uh, vaginal candidiasis. We provide vaginal uh, provision. Pisa codile why indicated, the, why contraindicated? Because it has significant dehydration effect and it's also has teratogenic effect on the fetus. Okay. Okay, can we end? Yeah, yeah, we should conclude. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. doctor. I know we have taken so much of your time. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, there was a connection issue. So yes. we are really sorry for keeping you up here. And we really thank you uh, uh, for taking your request to present here. And uh, for uh, uh, we, on behalf of our present, our participants, and also from Blue Health, we really thank you. Uh, so okay. you can, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.